some problem for some network. So maybe we can we wait uh, two three minutes. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, I had uh, some difficulty. Okay. Hi everybody. First, let me thank uh, uh, Dr. Kim and other organizers for uh, inv kind of invitation and giving me the opportunity to present this talk. Uh, today I'm going to talk about phase there new and I hope that I can convince you that it is an ideal place to unravel the richness of dark matter sector. The talk is based on this relatively new uh, paper. Uh, this slide shows the timeline of the LHC. We are somewhere here. Um, now uh, we are during the long shutdown uh, too, and uh, the um, LHC is being upgraded for uh, and being uh, prepared for its run three, uh, which will take place. In Excuse me. Excuse me. Yes. I, uh, are you sharing your screen? I don't see any yes. uh, slides. Don't see? Um, no. Oh, I cannot. Uh see your screen. Oh, now I can oh, see you. Yeah. Um, okay, so I will not go to full screen mode. Okay, uh, so let me repeat. Uh, we are somewhere here in total uh, during the long shutdown two. Uh, it will be followed by round three of LHC, which will take place from 2021 next year until 2023. Uh, during this period, LHC, um, uh, the Atlas detector can collect something like uh, 150 inverse femtoburn of data. It will be followed by uh, long shutdown three, and then uh, in 2026, uh, high luminosity mode of uh, LHC will start. During both these uh, periods, run three and uh, high luminosity LHC, the energy of the center of mass will be 14 T. Okay, uh, I suppose you are all familiar with the four famous main detectors of the LHC, uh, CMS, Atlas, LHC, B, and ALICE. These are ideal for detecting particles which are emitted with uh, high scattering angles. But if a particle is emitted in forward direction along the beam, uh, these detectors will miss them. So uh, along with these uh, main large detectors of LHC, uh, quite a few uh, smaller detectors have been designed whose aim is to detect uh, particles which are emitted in the forward direction. Some of them, such as this brand, um, um, is designed to, for calibration and be monitoring, but some of them, such as LHCF, uh, was designed to, for uh, searching for new physics, just in case some uh, new particle is emitted in the new um, hypothetical particle is emitted um, along the beam, or there is a deviation from the standard model prediction. Uh, the topic of my talk today is about one of such uh, detectors, which is called Phaser Nu. As the name suggests, it is uh, going um, to detect neutrinos. Uh, we know that neutrinos are uh, produced in the um, colliders such as LHC, but so far we have not uh, detected them. Uh, well, as you know, for detection of neutrinos, we need very small background and uh, main detectors of the LHC, for example, ATLAS or CMS, uh, have the opposite condition. There is a huge background from the beam. So phaser new for the first time will detect neutrinos from um, collider. Well, maybe you have already heard about PHASER, which, is, uh, which stands for Forward Search Experiment. PHASER NU is supposed to be um, located next to it. Here you can see a schematic view of the setup. Here is the interaction point of the ATLAS. So particles which are emitted in forward direction will come here. Um, here, because of the magnetic field uh, of the LHC tube, these uh, protons and charged particles will be deflected 
along this arc, but neutral particles or possible neutral particles such as neutrinos will move in the uh, straight forward direction and after um, crossing 10 meters of concrete and 90 meters of rock, they can reach where phaser nu and phaser are located. Okay, this is the prediction for flux of neutrinos at phaser nu. As expected, uh, the flux of muon neutrino is the highest. This is uh, the flux of electron neutrino, this is muon neutrino, this is tau neutrino, and these are the corresponding anti neutrinos. Uh, the highest flux um, corresponds to muon neutrino, which comes from pion decay. For higher energies, kion decay uh, dominate. And also, uh, phaser nu is designed to also detect tau neutrinos. As you know, detection of tau neutrinos is very challenging, but uh, the superb detector of phaser nu makes it possible. Most of the tau neutrinos come from charm decay. Okay. Well, uh, the detector <coughs> is going to be uh, composed of 1,000 uh, emulsion film uh, interleaved with one millimeter thick tungsten plates, something like that. And it can uh, disentangle the track of electron muon and tau from neutrino charge current interaction. Here you can see the um, spectrum of uh, detected neutrinos. The previous spectrum times cross section and efficiency. Uh, the size of detector is 25 centimeters, 25 centimeters times 135 centimeters, 1.35 uh, meters. Uh, and this is the direction in the forward direction. Okay, this is the cross section. Uh, the total mass of tungsten is 1.2 tons, and uh, during run three of uh, LHC, uh, we predict phaser um, uh, to detect 1,300 electron neutrino, 20,000 neon neutrino, and 20 tau neutrinos. Well, uh, as far as phaser, not phaser nu, but phaser is concerned. Uh, there are a lot of papers discussing how it can search for new physics. What kind of new physics? These kind of detectors which are located uh, after uh, some uh, thing like hundred meters of um, uh, rock and concrete can detect. One example is searching for dark photons which couple to <clears throat> charge particles. And, uh, well, uh, perhaps you have, uh, you are all familiar with uh, the theory of uh, dark photon. It has some kinetic mixing with ordinary photon. And uh, this paper shows that phaser can search this part of the parameter sp um, space. And phaser two, which is uh, an upgrade of phaser during uh, high luminosity LFC can probe even further. It can compete with ship. Okay, now let us go back to the, the, that was about phaser, the uh, study that had been done for phaser. Now uh, uh, let us come back to phaser nu. As I told you, the main goal of phaser nu is to detect uh, neutrinos uh, from um, collision. Uh, something that is predicted uh, within the standard model and the uh, and a um, flux of neutrino is granted. But can it also look for physics beyond the standard model? One ob obvious um, candidate which has been also studied in the proposal of phaser nu is neutrino oscillation to uh, a sterile neutrino. If uh, there is a fourth neutrino with a mass around 40 electron volt, then uh, we predict such um, oscillation probability and some deviation from the standard three neutrino scenario. And well, uh, collaboration has shown that uh, the bonds that can be set on um, the uh, mixing of various uh, flavors to this fourth strike neutrino uh, uh, are something like this. Uh, the most interesting part uh, is when um, a strike neutrino is mixed only with electron. 
Then, uh, as you see, the, these vertical lines in all of them show the present bond. And as you see, um, uh, phaser move can do better than the present bonds. And more interestingly, it can also probe the part of the parameter space that is favored by the so-called gallium anomaly. Uh, in the in first sight, I expected that uh, since we don't know much about tau neutrino uh, and phaser nu is going to detect tau neutrinos, it can improve the mixing with tau neutrino uh, very well. But as you see, the, per, uh, the present bonds are stronger than the bond that phaser nu can reach. This is a uh, very strong bond coming from uh, NOMAD experiment earlier. What else? Uh, that uh, uh, fourth neutrino mixed with uh, ordinary neutrinos is the simplest thing that comes to mind. But what kind of other new physics can be probed by phaser nu? Uh, to my knowledge, there are only three papers uh, addressing this question. Uh, one is uh, written by my former student, one by uh, Felix Kling at uh, Stanford, and the third is the one that I am going to uh, tell you about. Okay, let me just uh, remind you part of the distribution function, uh, which is very well known, well established. X here is the fraction of momentum carried by uh, a particular parton. And as you all know, when we go to small x, meaning small energies, we find that inside proton there is a large sea of uh, gluons uh, with very high multiplicity. Okay, uh, now consider two partons colliding with each other. We neglect uh, the transfer momentum, so we can write the four momentum of the two partons like this. The energy of the center of mass will be given by this, and P here is the momentum of each proton in, in the lab frame. So it is uh, 7 TeV, half of 14 TeV. We find that if, uh, for example, x1 is 0.1 and x2 is 10 to minus 7, the energy of the center of mass will be something like uh, GV. So what does this mean? This means that um, but with, in the collision of a um, parton, which carries something like uh, 700 um, GV energy, and one which has a very, very small energy, some new particle uh, with uh, energy of, uh, with mass of GV can be produced if the coupling is large enough, of course. Um, and then this uh, particle with mass of uh, GV will, of course, will have energy close to 700 um, uh, GV, so it will be uh, boosted in the forward direction. So kinematics tell us that particles lighter than GV can be produced and emitted in the forward direction. So it, they can, in principle, reach the uh, detector. So this is the main principle. OK. Uh, if we um, want um, some new physics to, be, uh, to show up in um, uh, phaser node, what kind of characteristics it, can, it should have? First, we need some intermediate particle, which I call X prime. Why? Because proton-proton uh, collision should produce it, so this X prime uh, should not have too small coupling to a standard model particles. Otherwise, its production rate will be low. But if the, uh, uh, this, uh, the same coupling will uh, lead to fast decay of uh, X prime to uh, partons or, or its interaction in the rock or uh, concrete not allowing it uh, to reach uh, the detector. So we want X prime to decay faster than uh, decaying to quarks, to uh, partons, to some new neutral particle, which can come up to phaser nu and somehow show up in phaser nu. So we are interested in this kind of uh, new physics. Then X comes to phaser or phaser nu and shows up uh, as a standard model fermions. For example, what kind of scenarios we can uh, have? These are some scenarios that come in mind. 
suppose X comes and decays to uh, a pair of charge standard model fermions. This is one scenario, one possibility. Another possibility is that aligned with these fermions, a neutral particle, which possibly, hopefully, is dark matter, is also emitted. And another possibility that I am interested in is that X may decay to a pair of yet other neutral particles, which uh, travel a distance uh, like one mil millimeter or 10 centimeter. Or even more interestingly, Align with this pair, a dark matter particle, a neutral particle, which shows up as missing energy momentum, is uh, detected, uh, is emitted, and then uh, eta decays to charge particles. Well, these are all possibilities. You can, possibilities are endless, of course. Um, but a detector such as phaser, which has already been uh, extensively studied in the literature, cannot much uh, do much uh, for distinguishing between different scenarios. Phaser no has uh, designed to detect tau neutrinos. So this means that its uh, angular resolution, its uh, position in, um, resolution is great, superb. And uh, our idea was to use this uh, superb um, capabilities of phaser rule and check how it can distinguish between these scenarios. This is the unique um, feature or possibility that uh, phaser rule provides for us. So if dark matter is rich, uh, having many um, particles, which in a moment I am going to tell you that is some a possibility, an interesting possibility, then phaser rule can uh, help us. Okay, so uh, we mentioned dark matter, but uh, is dark matter made of? We don't know uh, for very long time. Um, WIMP, which stands for Weakly Interacting Massive Particle, was um, considered the uh, most popular um, candidate for the dark matter. Uh, what made this uh, WIMP candidate uh, very popular something like 20 years ago, 10 years ago, was that, uh, was this um, observation. Uh, we know that in order uh, for dark matter to be pr produced uh, within the famous thermal phase out scenario and uh, lead to um, uh, right, correct, observed uh, abundance, the annihilation cross-section should be something like one picobar. Now, if, um, Mm, we take the typ uh, typical coupling of dark matter to be of order of the coupling, weak coupling. We find that the mass mass scale involved in the scenario of dark matter, whatever it is, should be something like 100 GeV. Notice that the coupling is not too small and the mass is not too large. So uh, it seems that there are a lot of possibilities to look for and search for dark matter. And three strategies uh, for searching for WIMP uh, had been um, proposed. Uh, production of dark matter at LHC and its detection, um, direct dark matter search experiments, and indirect dark matter search experiments that you, are, uh, you all know about. Um, but uh, again, you know that uh, searches for dark matter so far has yielded uh, null results. We have not seen a conclusive or um, detected a conclusive established signal for dark matter for WIMP uh, from these three um, search strategies. Okay, this plot was produced in 2013. It shows uh, the bounds that can be achieved uh, on WIMP nucleon cross section from various experiments some of the experiments uh, some of the bounds uh, were present back then some were for forecast for uh, future and we are in, we are now here this is the strongest bond on um, dark matter nucleus interaction uh, please notice this is nucleus not electron uh, and uh, all is all that has been found is just bound, not mm, uh, detection, conclusive de detection. Okay, as I said, um, 
there were very uh, high hopes that uh, WIMP will be um, discovered by any of these experiments, for example, Xenon Wantan, which has produced only bombs. But notice that in 2013, the WIMP paradigm was still young, and as the Iranians say, uh, having high hopes for young ones is justifiable. I cannot say that no results have ruled out WIMP because, as you see, there, are, there is still a large uh, parameter space still unexplored. So hopes for uh, searching for, for discovering uh, WIMP is not, has not died away, but arguably the hegemony of WIMP as the dark matter candidate is broken. Uh, so since something like uh, 10 years ago, uh, model builders as well as experimentalists uh, have tried to go out of their comfort zone, uh, which was the, um, a dark matter candidate with mass in the range of 100 GB to 1 TV. And uh, we are exploring the whole possible range. Uh, in, in nowadays, if you um, see the archive, you will find out that people are um, writing papers. Uh, about dark matter in any range uh, with mass higher than ten, uh, 10 to minus 21 electron volt. They are not confined to this range anymore. Now, um, let us just move a little bit from this comfort zone and come to GV dark matter. Uh, as you see, the bounds, uh, this is the strongest bound on this range. Uh, and as you see, the bound is much, much uh, less stringent than the bond in uh, the range that the mass of the dark matter is uh, higher than 100 G. But if you want um, thermal freeze-out scenario as the dark matter production mechanism in the early universe, then annihilation cross-section should be uh, still of order of one picobar. Now this is, there is this uh, observation. Sigma here is annihilation cross-section. It is written based on dimensional analysis. G is the uh, typical coupling of dark matter, and M, capital M here, is the mass of the mediator. Now, if we take the mass of uh, the dark matter to be something around GV, con uh, considering that this M couples to a standard model, if you want dark matter annihilation, uh, produce a standard model. M sh uh, this uh, intermediator should couple to a standard model particles, and then there are such as, for example, electron muon, quarks, gluons, or photons, and then there is a bond uh, on uh, its mass and coupling, which uh, tells us that the cross section should be much smaller than picobarn. So we cannot have a successful thermal free result scenario for GeV. Of course, there are, this was a very general consideration. There are exceptions. For example, one exception is uh, our uh, slim scenario in which uh, annihilation uh, produces um, neutrinos. And well, we have shown that within this scenario, we can of course explain the smallness of neutrino mass and uh, provide a suitable dark matter uh, with mass around MeV. Then we consider GV scale. Um, one possibility is that um, dark matter in a state of latent to standard model particles uh, and leads to other particles, some beyond standard model particles that we have not discovered yet. Let us call this intermediate particle uh, eta. Okay. Um, then. Uh, the mediator of this uh, process can be light, and its coupling can be large. Uh, we can have uh, such. Uh, we can have them in this range, and easily we can have uh, cross section of order of one pico one as we need for thermal free result scenario. Uh, then this intermediate eta particle can decay to a pair of standard model fermions. As long as the mass of this uh, intermediate particle is larger than 10 MeV and its lifetime is smaller than one second, we are safe from BBM bounds. We don't need to 
worry uh, about bonds from big bang nucleosynthesis in their universe. Okay, uh, so far so good. So we found that um, if we want dark matter to be uh, in the GV range and if we want it to be produced via thermal freeze like scenario, uh, we um, uh, existence of some intermediate particle eta which couples to dark matter uh, with mass around 100 e MeV or so uh, is motivated based on this observation. So uh, there is another observation. Well, in the past, something like 20 uh, years ago, uh, the general um, law was that we should uh, look for dark matter models which were minimal. This, there has been a shift of para paradigm from minimality in model building to richness in model building. And this comes mostly from comparison with uh, uh, luminous sector, the ordinary standard model sector. Look at the list of particles in the standard model. They are not minimal. There are a lot of particles with different kind of interaction, uh, self-interaction, interaction between them. And really, this is what makes life rich and colorful. In fact, uh, if uh, we had only one um, species of uh, ordinary matter, of course, nucleus, uh, nuclei would, would not be formed and life, we wouldn't be here. There would not be life. The very fact that there is carbon atom, hydrogen atom, and blah, blah, and the chemistry uh, goes back to the fact that standard model uh, content is not minimal. It is quite rich. So. Uh, we started, uh, well, the community is something like 10 years ago started asking itself, himself, why should dark matter be minimal? Uh, and in fact, it would be boring if, it is if there is just one species of dark matter. So, uh, bear in mind that this shift of paradigm also has taken place. Now, if we have this rich dark sector, can we really discover its properties, its uh, various components or so, well, it is going to be very difficult. Pro uh, discovering dark matter uh, itself is difficult. Learning about its properties and uh, its richness is going to be even more challenging, so we should not overlook any possibility to do so. Now, we, have, we are going to have phase new in less than one uh, year, with its superb position as spatial resolution, which enables reconstructing invisible tracks of neutral particles decaying to charge leptons. The point, uh, point of uh, this talk is that phaser nu can be a useful uh, tool for uncovering the richness of the dark sector. Okay, I remind you the setup of the phaser nu. And now let me tell you about our toy model, uh, which we have built to show that, um, show as an example, how phaser nu can help us to uncover dark sector. This, uh, these are the um, features of the toy model, which are rather generic. Uh, uh, an intermediate uh, particle, which we call X prime, is produced at the interaction point of Atlas. Then it decays to uh, a pair of um, other neutral particles before reaching detector. X comes to detector and uh, produces a standard model charge lepton. This is a generic uh, feature. And uh, the toy model that we have chosen to demonstrate the um, capabilities of phase zero uh, has these features. X at the detector decays to uh, two intermediate particles and dark matter. And these ETAs are the same intermediate particles that we encountered in the discussion of uh, thermal dark matter production in the early universe and its um, annihilation. Then this eta and eta bar particles uh, decay inside the detector after traveling some distance of one millimeter to 10 centimeters. So, uh, yes. 
Yes. Uh, could you show the previous slide? Sure. Yeah, here. No. The No, no, no. The ju oh. just yeah, this one, toy model. So mm -hmm. here uh, the particle x prime. Is it or this is also in the uh, uh, this is also new, some particle in the new physics sector, right? Yes. yes. X yes. prime is also new new particle, right? Yeah. I'm okay. going to uh, discuss different, diff introduce different possibilities for X prime. What kind of particle okay. can be? So far, I have not specified whether X, for example, X or X, Y are um, uh, fermions or scalars. I am talking in general. Then uh, uh, I am sorry. To sorry, I was asking X prime. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I am going to tell it. X prime is also new particle, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then uh, this uh, this shows a schematic view of some event. X comes in the forward direction inside the detector. It decays to three particles. All three of them are uh, neutral, so they cannot be directly detected. Why is dark matter which escape detection? Uh, but eta and eta bar come and decay to uh, charged leptons. The energy momentum of these four charged leptons, two pairs, can be constructed with great precision. So we can tell what are the uh, directions and momentum of eta and eta bar. And then we check whether they meet in one point or not. If they do meet, this means that they come from the chaos of the same particle. And this is, again, I, I'm emphasizing the greatness of phase load. You cannot do this with other detector size, such as phase. OK. Um, <clears throat> I think I already told you about this. OK. Um, as I told you, by measuring the energy momentum of the final uh, leptons, you can, we can, uh, phaser nu can uh, reconstruct the momentum of eta and eta bar. Also, the position of the vertices of this uh, eta and eta bar uh, decay can be measured with great precision. Uh, so, the um, energy momentum of eta and eta bar can be reconstructed with uh, rather good precision uh, up to uh, uh, an uncertainty of delta, which is uh, the uh, opening angle of this little uh, cones. And we can check whether they meet at one point and or in one region or not. If they do, this means that they come from the, the same vertex. So this, is, this region is the X decay vertex. Okay. So, um, well, I emphasize that we have uh, we should have an intermediate particle which is produced in the interaction point. We call it X prime. So let us discuss what kind of particle this X prime can be. As was emphasized, this is a beyond the standard model particle too. One possibility which has been explored in the context of phaser a lot is a Z prime boson. We can identify X prime with a Z prime boson of some um, combination of baryon number and lepton number, which are anomaly free. Or we can consider it uh, to be a dark photon, which mixes with uh, ordinary photon. Another possibility is that phi is a scalar, which couples to quarks. Well, uh, how can you couple uh, singlet scalar to, uh, to to standard model quarks? Uh, you should invoke mixing either by a standard model Higgs or by some new uh, inert Higgs uh, doublet to make it electroweak invariant. In this case, then coupling of uh, phi to uh, first generation quarks will be suppressed by Yukawa coupling of uh, in the standard model or by mass over the vacuum expectation value of the Higgs. And then this means that um, th uh, this uh, phi particle cannot be produced directly by parton parton interaction, but it can be produced by the kind of uh, heavier masses. And well, people have discussed. Uh, this in the literature. But in this case, um, 
it, the, we have the freedom to uh, have uh, fight with large coupling to uh, first generation quarks and direct production of phi at interaction point. Okay, uh, another possibility which uh, we um, focused on in our paper was uh, an X prime, uh, an axion like X prime particle which um, couples to gluons. Okay, this is motivated for solving QC data problem too, uh, but we will not discuss QCD theta term. We are just using it as, as an example for intermediate particle. In the simplest um, axiom model, the mass of X prime should be very small, suppressed by uh, this coupling. But uh, in rather recent paper uh, by this group, it has uh, been shown that um, it is even for solving some problems, theoretical problems uh, in the um, axiom um, scenario, it is uh, better to go beyond uh, the simple scenario and in this case x prime can be heavy all of this range with x prime in the gv until tv and these values of uh, lambda is allowed okay um then x prime with uh, mass larger than three pions can decay fast to gluons so we need a coupling to x x bar uh, which leads to a decay to x x bar faster than decay to hadrons. Uh, well, if x is a scalar, we can have such three linear coupling. If it's fermion, we can have such um, Yukawa coupling. In any case, uh, lambda, which uh, parameterizes the uh, coupling should be larger than 10 to minus 6 in order for um, faster decay of x prime to x x bar. If lambda is in this range, x prime will decay after traveling less than one meter, so before reaching uh, the rock and concrete. Okay, um, well, well, x prime can uh, be produced by Coulomb fusion at the interaction point directly. Uh, excuse, the, me. Yes? excuse me, uh, previous slide. Sure. Yeah, here uh, in the first line, you have a statement that X prime with a mass larger than three pi on mass decays fast to gluons. How about, uh, for example, K plus K minus charged K on pair or neutral K on pair depending on so is it the first uh, statement is a ro robust and also very crucial for your uh, following argument? Let me explain. Um, X prime will decay, of course. It, X prime is coupled only to uh, gluons, not to quarks in the tree level. So it will decay to gluons and gluons then uh, hadronize. Yes. Uh, uh, this well, uh, this three pion mass com this, this limit comes from kinematics. First of all, X prime cannot decay to two pions. Okay, why? So because of you, uh, uh, sorry, well, I probably uh, probably follow your uh, uh, so you assume X prime couples only to gluons, two gluons. Yeah, this is the coupling that it has. It produces gluons ah, and then okay, okay. Uh, hadronized producing different particles, including uh, chaos. GG Dewar. Yeah. It's couples. The point is that if X prime is lighter than three pi one, this decay cannot take place because, uh, well, final states should be uh, hadrons, okay? The minimal is two, ha two pi ions, okay? And two pi ions uh, have parity of plus. Yeah. Yeah. Not expand uh, through the scale. Yeah, right. You come from that. Okay, um, now, uh, as I said, Coulomb Coulomb can fuse to produce X prime. Um, energy mom uh, provided that the energy momentum is of the two partons is such that the center of mass energy 
corresponds to x prime. Well, then cross-section will be given by something like this. And this G, FG are uh, Goulon part uh, on distribution function at U squared equal to the mass squared of X prime. Well, uh, so far we have neglected the transverse uh, momentum of the Goulons that are interacting. Uh, then this means that X prime will be um, emitted in exactly forward direction. This is of course, unrealistic, the uh, partons inside, uh, inside part gluons inside a proton will have a transverse momentum of around 200 MeV, and this will uh, lead to a spread of X prime within a solid, small, uh, small solid angle of uh, this size. There, theta t is PT, 200 MeV, divided by energy of X prime. Okay, um, well, you may wonder why uh, we focus on uh, two to one interaction. In principle, uh, X prime can be produced via this two to uh, interaction, two to two interactions, two, two body interactions. Too. Uh, in this case, most of the produced X prime will have high transverse momentum. Uh, because some transverse momentum is carried away by Q. For uh, if we wanted to study X prime at Atlas, we should have focused on this kind of interaction, because uh, X prime will have uh, will be emitted in directions can, that can reach uh, Atlas and CMS, but not phase. For X prime emitted in the direction of phasor, the contribution from this kind of processes is uh, rather small and we have neglected in our analysis. Now, let us go to uh, rest frame of X prime. Then X particle in the rest frame of X prime will have such typical momentum. Uh, considering that the velocity of X prime in the lab frame is something like this, something finite, this means that uh, each, uh, well, uh, consider um, some uh, X um, emitted in definite di direction, then X prime emitted in a definite direction, then X will have some S spread because of this uh, kinematics, uh, which can be characterized by theta sub S. And depending on the ratio between M X prime and a, Mx, it can be larger than the spread of X prime, or it can be uh, smaller. In any case, uh, not all of the emitted X particles can reach the detector. Uh, remember that the transfer size of the detector uh, was 25 centimeter times 75 centimeter, and the detector phaser new detector is located something like 480 meters away from the interaction point. So only X particles emitted in within this small angle, which I call theta sub D, which has a size of five times 10 to minus uh, four reach the detector. So only a fraction, given by this uh, ratio reach the detector. This is just uh, geometry. But the interesting point is that uh, those uh, X particles which are emitted uh, in a direction that reach uh, the detector uh, will have, uh, because they are emitted in the forward direction, will have um, energy uh, which is related to the energy of the parent particle by this formula, okay? For a given energy of X prime, uh, the energy of X will be monochromatic, but of course, since the energy is, uh, of X prime particles are continuous, the spectrum of X particles will be continuous too. Now, this formula shows the um, spectrum of uh, X particles reaching the detector, the phaser new detector. L here is the luminosity. F is the fraction uh, emitted in the direction of the uh, 
detector. This is the cross section that we already had, and this factor relates the energy of X prime and X. Um, notice that this fraction of uh, par X particles by which reach the detector uh, is proportional to the area of the detector. This plus shows the spectrum for run three of LHC, which, as I told you, will take place from 2021 to 2023, for these values of parameters. The uncertainty, the large uncertainty that you see, comes from the uncertainties in the PDFs. Uh, well, remember that one of the patterns uh, involving the production of X prime had very small X. Uh, momentum fraction and at a small momentum fraction, the uncertainty in the PDFs is large. Well, the area below the uh, curve is the total number of uh, X, X particles reaching the detector, and in the favorable range that lambda is close to uh, the, to the present bound. Um, the number is expected to be something like 100,000. But not all of them can show up in the detector. In order for X to be detected, it should decay inside the detector. So we should multiply it by the probability of uh, decaying inside the detector. Uh, this is the probability that uh, X particles survive up to distance of 480 meters. And this is the probability that it decays inside the detector, S sub S, the detector length in the forward direction. Okay, so notice that this was uh, proportional to detector area, this is proportional to detector length, so it, the whole thing is proportional to detector volume as expected. Uh, here in this formula, gamma uh, is the boost factor, tau is the lifetime of X, of course, so let us uh, see what kind of bounds can be found on lambda for this setup. For phaser nu, uh, which has a length of 130 centimeters, uh, during um, LLC run uh, 3 from 2021 to 2023. This is very close in three years, in four years. Um, and then we also see how phaser nu, which is an upgrade of phaser for high luminosity LHC, which will um, take place until 2035, can do with um, size of five meters. Here, uh, we show the um, bound, the lower bound on lambda that can be found for versus the lifetime of X. For very short uh, lifetimes, as expected, the bound is weak. Why? Because X particles decay before reaching the detector. This is for uh, high luminosity, and this is for, for the upgrade, and this is for um, recent future. Uh, well, when uh, tau is large, then this factor is, uh, the lifetime is large, uh, this factor is practically one, and uh, we expect such behavior, which we see here. Okay, um, as I told you, something like 100,000 uh, in the favorable range, uh, something like 100,000 X particles can uh, pass through phaser nu, but not all of them decay. Uh, the probability that they decay is less than 1%, so in total we expect few hundred, uh, in the best uh, scenario, if uh, parameters in, are in the favorable range, we will expect something like 100 events, which is even uh, still good. It is good, to, it is good enough to perform some um, statistical analysis. Okay, back to our toy model. Uh, as I said, uh, Y here will appear as missing momentum, and then uh, we will have uh, these two pairs of charged leptons whose energy momentum we can reconstruct. 
the position of these vertices where discharged leptons come out can be uh, measured at phaser nu with remarkable precision of 0.4 micrometer. And the angular resolution in the, uh, of uh, finding the momentum of uh, this charged lepton is 0.06 milliradian. As you see, it is remarkable. The energy resolution of uh, reconstructing the energy, uh, energy of these particles is not so high, but it's still good enough. Uh, well, the typical, since these X particles are highly boosted, uh, the eta particles coming out of it uh, will be uh, detected, will be, will be emitted in the for, rather forward direction. The typical angle that they make with the uh, forward direction or the direction of X, coming X particle is something like 10 to minus 2, 10 to minus 3. And the angle that these uh, leptons make with each other is also small. Um, considering these uncertainties, the um, precision in reconstructing the direction of uh, eta and eta bar uh, is of this order. Still, it is, um, considering that theta uh, L is small, it still it is small, is reasonably good. Now, if you want to find out whether align this eta and eta bar, which lead to a pair, uh, a pair of charged leptons, a third particle, which hopefully is dark matter, is emitted or not, we should uh, measure the transverse momentum of this uh, pair and check whether uh, it is zero or not. We can tell whether a third Y particle is produced if the uncertainty in the reconstruction of the mom uh, transverse moment of uh, some of these is smaller than their uh, the sum of their transverse moment. The, tra uh, the uncertainty in reconstruction, the transverse moment of eta eta bar system uh, receives contribution from three uncertainties, the energy uh, resolution of uh, charged leptons, their angular resolution, and alignment, because we need to uh, know the uh, Z direction, the alignment of the detector relative to, to, um, to beam line uh, well enough. And the uncertainty, um, experimental uncertainty here is 10 to minus 3. Well, Putting this together, again, I ask the question whether we can tell, we can uh, check this, whether this condition is satisfied or not. And it depends on which direction eta and eta bar are emitted. If their um, angle, that projection of momenta of eta and eta bar onto xy uh, uh, plane, make with each other is smaller than 90 degrees, then uh, what will happen is that uh, the sum of these two momenta will be larger than the momenta itself. So this condition can be satisfied. For such events, yes, we can tell whether a third particle is uh, produced or not. But if the angle is larger than 90 degrees, this means that here there is a cancellation, so this, uh, this uh, condition cannot be satisfied. So we cannot tell whether a Y particle is produced. Now, uh, whether in practice we will be able uh, to tell the difference depends on the statistics. For example, if uh, we are in the favor of a range and we have something like 100 events, well, some, on average, 50 uh, events uh, will have this condition, uh, 50 events uh, will satisfy this condition. So for 50 events for which uh, the angle is smaller than 90 degrees, we can make this analysis and find out that a third particle is uh, emitted, which hopefully can be dark matter because it's missing the energy. Okay. <clears throat> we can reconstruct uh, the mass of uh, eta by uh, measuring the energy momentum of each pair. Uh, if we have only one pair, the 
uh, uncertainty in the reconstructing the mass of eta will be something like 40 percent but if we have uh, n events say 100 events the uncertainty can uh, be reduced to four percent um okay um, we can uh, even uh, study and uh, extract the decay length of uh, eta by uh, measuring the distance that these uh, tracks the hypothetical tracks meet from the vertex of el, el brar and the precision if we have something like 100 events can be something like 10 percent uh, can we measure the mass of X and Y particles? That's more challenging because, uh, of course, this aspect from that we have driven um, uh, is um, sensitive to mass of X. If X increases, this uh, peak shifts in this direction. But then uh, information that can be extracted on the mass of X will be limited both by statistics and the large uncertainties in on PDFs. Unlike eta, we can derive the mass of eta without suffering from uncertainties in the PDFs part of distribution function. Now let us go to uh, discussion of connection to dark matter. Uh, well, X prime particle which couples to coulombs can be produced abundantly in the early universe and come to thermal equilibrium and then X prime decays to X and Y and uh, bring them to thermal equilibrium with uh, plasma 2. Now, uh, we will have the, uh, we need something like thermal freeze out scenario because uh, the dark matter particles come to thermal equilibrium in the early universe. Well, annihilation can take place uh, via um, if X, X and Y particles are fermionic. Uh, via um, some intermediate particle, which we denote by V, and uh, it couples to uh, eta and X and Y particles as this, uh, demanding that annihilation cross-section is 1 pico 1, we uh, sh should have here. We don't have any bond on the mass of uh, V, this intermediate particle, which couples only to the dark sector, so this is okay. Um, we take the mass of V to be heavier than the mass of X, so this decay cannot take place. And the main decay mode uh, will be through by the decay that we want. And if we want the lifetime to be of this order, this means that GX should be uh, 10 to minus 5. Okay. Um, one point that we should notice here is that if X and Y are fermionic, it must be complex. Otherwise, there will be some cancellation in the U and T channels, uh, which uh, makes cross annihilation cross-section small. Another point is that, uh, notice here we have some uh, Z2 cross, Z2 symmetry, one of these Z2s under which uh, X, Y, and V particles are all odd, and the rest of the particles are even, is exact, is, and is what, um, makes the lightest uh, particle, which is Y, stable and as a result, a suitable dark matter uh, candidate. Uh, the other uh, Z2 symmetry uh, doesn't need to be exact, but uh, under this, uh, eta and V are odd, and this uh, for this uh, interaction of this form and uh, this kind of interaction, we need we wanted uh, decay to uh, to be three body. Okay. Now let us uh, consider the case that X and Y particles are scalar. Then we do not need any uh, intermediate uh, extra particle. Uh, invoking a Z2 cross Z2 Z cross Z2 under which only one of these particles are um, odd to um, simplify the um, interaction to this form, to get rid of uh, redundant terms. Then uh, this lambda one uh, 
breaks one of the Z2s to Z2 cross Z1, but uh, this approximate Z2 guarantees that lambda 1 is uh, much smaller than lambda 3. The symmetry forbids such decay. Then, if we want uh, the, uh, the decay uh, have such lifetime, lambda 1 should be something like 10 to minus 6. And then if we want annihilation to be cross-section to be a four drop one pico one, lambda three is 10 to minus four. There is a hierarchy between lambda one and lambda three, which uh, is explained by the symmetry that I mentioned. We will, this way we can have a successful thermal for result scenario with um, X particle decaying to Y eta eta bar, which leads to desired um, signature at phaser nu. And we can have uh, Y particles, which are dark matter particles, annihilating to this intermediate eta particles. Okay. Uh, let me conclude, uh, summarize my conclusions. Uh, phaser nu, with its superb ability, abilities to reconstruct tracks is ideal to study new long lived GV scale feebly interacting particles that go through chain decays. This uh, brings about intriguing possibility for exploring GV scale dark matter. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Professor Yasun Parjan. So, any questions? I have a live question. Yes. Can you consider the uh, displaced vertex signal in phaser or phaser new detector inside the detector? Uh, yes, this is exactly the displaced. If I, I am not sure if I heard you correctly, but you were asking about displaced vertex, right? Uh, this is exactly this displaced vertex. Uh, we can see because in phaser nu, we can reconstruct the vertex of these particles, this yes. eta and eta decay, and then uh, we can reconstruct by measuring the energy momentum of the final charge leptons, uh, the form momentum of the or the, the momentum of eta and eta bar both of them, and then we can check whether they meet at one point or not. In this schematic, yeah, we can, this is exactly uh, displaced vertex. There is nothing here because it is a neutral eta and eta bar that are uh, propagating. But by measuring the um, uh, energy momentum of the final leptons, uh, we can reconstruct these tracks, which are invisible themselves. So this is exactly displaced vertex. Was that, does this answer your question? Uh, yes. Well, please notice that this is, uh, we can do this thanks to great uh, precision of phaser nu. Uh, position um, resolution is 0.4 micrometer. Angular resolution is uh, 0.06 milliradian. Uh, milli so, the distance, the location of this vertex can be measured by 0.4 micrometer. This cannot be done by um, phaser, okay? Phaser is a great detector tool, but it doesn't have uh, a competitive position resolution. Phaser no synth is designed to detect tau tracks, enjoys this very, very high resolution, which can be we claim in our paper and in the fact that uh, can be used also for looking for some rich dark matter spectrum which goes to chain yeah. yeah. Thank you for. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.
can you improve the uh, uh, energy resolution more than 30%? Energy resolution. Uh, well, uh, worse mm -hmm. than uh, in the atlas, comparing to atlas detector. Yeah, yeah, the energy resolution is not competitive with ATLAS. Uh, well, I'm not an experimentalist, so I cannot speak for them, but usually experimentalists find a way to do so. But uh, for the purpose of uh, the kind of search that they are doing, energy res resolution is not so important, so they are not um, working much on it. Notice that this is uh, uh, emulsion detector and emulsion detectors are not um, the best for energy resolution uh, measure, uh, measurements. Um, notice that phaser will be located next to phaser nu and that one has a better energy resolution. These are complementary to each other. Uh. Hello, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. So here, I expect the laptop you mentioned for both the electron and muons, right? Electron what? Uh, I didn't hear you. Electron and muon. Electron and muon. Yeah. Uh, my, um, we focused on electrons rather than muons uh, because the benchmark point that we focused on uh, was X prime with mass 3 GV, X with mass um, 1 GV, and we wanted eta to be much lighter than uh, X, okay? I see. Um, then it cannot decay to muons. But if, uh, for example, X was uh, heavier, and um, for example, 3 GV or so, uh, then um, eta could be could have something like 300 um, MeV mass, and then it could decay to muon pairs. Uh, why we were not so interested in that uh, range of parameters is that if X prime uh, and X are heavier, then, uh, let me bring the formula for you, then uh, the fraction of the uh, X particles which are emitted uh, in the direction of the detector will be reduced. Uh, and then we will have smaller statistics. Okay. Thank you for your answer. You're welcome. Uh, any other question? There is, uh, so then after we have some 10 minute breaks, then we have some discussion session for some 10 or 20 minutes. <laughs> okay. 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 Then, okay, then let's think, thanks again. Um, I, um,